especially the screen saving need to be done then enter screen okay here okay now we will do something exercise which is very crucial that's the meeting in the farm system that's uh, uh, one of the last topic which need to be dealt and uh, later the overview will be meeting system then statistical introduction will be dealt aims and objectives of the breeding strategy how to develop the breeding system then breeding strategy recommended by the, the government of india then weeds use for propagation then silent breeding policy of the nation and future scope of developing the breeding strategy so what's a mating system actually it is a random system and non random system so based on the phenotypic uh, characteristic or relationship it is classified as positive then the uh, assortative type of the uh, mating system is dead most of the time then the uh, based on genetic uh, and predicted type of the relationships the inbreeding and outbreeding both of these are dealt inbreeding and outbreeding then at the same time uh, what we can say is inbreeding is close inbreeding then line breeding both are there and apart from this one the outbreeding is classified into different uh, techniques like close so uh, this uh, uh, out crossing then cross breeding breeding up services hybridization then specific cross breeding then rotational cross breeding system so these are the classifications of the mating system then why we are going to use mating system it is for genetic superiority then to have the animals that are genetically superior to the other animals the same breed of the class so animals are superior based on traits selected by the breeder then the another terminology already we have dealt it several times that the heterosis means performance of offspring that is greater than the average of its prey it means the offspring should always prefer better than that of the offspring uh, uh, parents then the mating systems are always classified as the inbreeding outbreeding and cross breeding etc so inbreeding means the animals which are genetically close to each other are bred and inbreeding called as intensive inbreeding and live breeding so what's an intensive inbreeding means mating up of closely related animals for several generations then the line uh, breeding a mild form of inbreeding that maintains a very high genetic relationship to an outstanding ancestor then outbreeding it's also called as the mating animals that maintain a very high genetic relationship to, to the outstanding ancestor and apart from this one the mating animals is not closely related as the average population and there are four types of the outbreeding called as species cross cross breeding out crossing and breeding up so here you can see that the species cross means crossing the animal of different species for example a horse to that donkey which is not possible of course but even then the breeding systems are conducting this thing and cross breeding is mating up of the animals of different established breeds then out crossing is mating up of unrelated animals with the same type of the breeds hence the grading up means mating up of the pure breed sires to commercial grade females and their female offspring so what's in inbreeding means mating the animals which are related to each other through a common ancestor up to 4 to 6 generation this is what so 
the type of inbreeding which closely which closely related mates are mated then different types of the close mating are full sib mating then half sib mating then uh, the parent offspring mating then double first cousin mating first cousin mating second cousin half cousin mating all these are the common breeding systems in case of the animals then the line breeding is a mild form of breeding to maintain very high degree of genetic relationship to an outstanding ancestor mainly the sire of very high genetic merit so then here you can see that these are all the pathway of close mating here there are four parents are there means the first parents are a and b then a is cross to d and b is cross to c and b also to d and a is to c then c and d mate to form the e so that this is called as the full c whereas the half c a will be crossed with that of b and c and b and c will generate d whereas parent of spring is the a single parent will cross to d and ultimately it will happen with z whereas the first cousin also it is denoted as a into d b into c a into c and b into d ultimately the c is met with e, e and d is f with a separate state and ultimately it will come with an offspring called as g whereas the second cousin same thing yes y then d x a b c and d ultimately this is coming out as the e so here also the double cousin is little more complicated as the double cousin means here you can see the definition of the double cousin is the outbreeding system inbreeding system in which the a is bred with that of the e then b with f a with f b with e whereas the second generation will also once again cross with the siblings and double cousins ultimately ending up with the k so the inbreeding coefficient is a factor that is probably the alleles at locus are identical by descent so they are exact copy of a single allele then range in breeding coefficient from 0 to 1 so relationship coefficient between two individual it is probability that both carry a particular allele due to the common ancestry so the inbreeding relationship of the different types of the uh, inbreeding are so mating means inbreeding coefficient relationship coefficient so the full sib mating and parent sib mating will have the inbreeding coefficient or fx of 0.25 and r as 0.5 half sib mating and double one cousin it is 1 to 5 whereas it is 0.25 in case of the relation coefficient so that you can see here that the full cousin mating will have the this figure as in reading coefficient and 0.2125 as the relation coefficient then the second cousin mating still it is reduced then it is also reduced here so the inbred line is another thing where in which the inbreds develop from two generations of full sib matings so it has 0.35 to 37.5 percent minimum inbreeding coefficient so all individuals have identical genotype inbred lines are uh, against adverse environment and they need good environment to growth and for farmers and these are highly homozygous in lines and these lines 
to be for the hybridization then we can say that these lines are in crossing two different inbred lines derived from the same inbred so in breeding cross of two different inbred lines derived from different breeds so the consequences of the inbreeding are as it is going on increasing increases the homozygosity and decreases heterozygosity so the uncovering the recessive genes uh, leading to hereditary defect which is not recommended many times then increased genetic resemblance and uh, prepotency is another thing and decreases the genetic variability then increases environmental variance within the population and reduces the homeostatic ability then phenotypic consequences are also changing depress the growth rate reduces the reproductive efficiency then appearance of the genetic defect will be there and adverse effect on fitness traits will be there as one of the disadvantages so the outbreeding is mating between animals which are not at all related to each other for at least 4 to 6 generation this is a huge gap then what is the outcrossing means mating between unrelated animals within the same breed the selective breeding means outcrossing within a herd use of a selected sires and dams for example a very good jersey dam will be crossed with that of a very good jersey sire whereas the cross breeding mating between the animals of different breeds within the same species for example bivalve cattle boss indicus or boss taurus so the cross breed sheep or the isardale then avicalin etc and cross breeds of the cattle are tiger jerkrab and so many other varieties are there so ultimately a new breed is obtained by this type of the mating and grading up is mating up of pure bred sire of the descriptive breed within a local female then pure breed is obtained by repeated back crossing so up to 7 to 8 generation then once again there is a definition called as the cross top crossing breeding up only one generation then species hybridization means mating between the animals of different species for example the jack is crossed with that of a male and the mule is the outcome and cattle and yak are going to produce the pm new the american buffalo bull is crossed with that of the domestic cow it is going to produce a new type of the breed called as the catello so you need to remember all these things pn new and catello because the jack and mare they are going to be crossed what are the heterosis cross bred progeny shows better adaptation to the environment and show higher fertility viability improved size and grow and other polygenic trait compared to the pure breeds so it is an additional performance shown by the first generation of springs above mean performance of their parental performance usually the heterosis depends upon the magnitude of non additive gene action then the factors determining magnitude of heterosis are degree of dominance genetic diversity between parental population and also the f1 cross breed of crossing between homozygous breeds exhibits 100% heterozygosity whereas the heterosis h f1 and improved performance over the parental population so the intersex mating f1 f1 and uh, produces f2 generation and it exhibits the loss in heterosis when f2 mated among them level of heterozygosity in f3 remain same as f2 so ultimately this can be concluded as improved performance of the f1 generation over transient and not possible to fix finally so 
to take full advantage of the heterosis, fresh crosses between the breeds have to be made in each generation. Then heterosis have between the F1 and F2 generation but remain constant in subsequent generation from F2 onwards. So types of the heterosis are individual heterosis, then maternal heterosis and parental heterosis. So the individual heterosis is increased performance exhibited by the cross-bred individual animalism. Maternal heterosis is dams are cross-bred, the benefits occurring from their heterotic effects are obtained and accumulated in their breeds. Whereas the paternal heterosis is exhibited by the crossbred males for paternal traits such as libido, cement trait, etc. Whereas the individual heterosis is most important and practical significance as the animals used for the commercial production, maybe a broiler chicken or a crossbreed cattle. Then the maternal heterosis is used for uh, better bearing and meat producing animals. Whereas the parental heterosis is least important because sire influence performance of their offspring is through only through the genes. Hence, specific crossbreeding system is there. Then here lot of variants are there to breed specific crossing. Then back crossing, three bread crossing, and four bread crossing. As the name indicates, this two bread crossing means it is indicated that A to B to A B, A is a male, B is a female, and A B is a crossbreed. <coughs> Whereas crossbreed progeny F1 do not does not use do not use it in case of the breeding program, whereas the progeny shows 100% individual heterosis. Whereas black crossing means waiting F1 to the one of the parental leads, for example, A or B, then A, B is, A is crossed either A or B. Here it utilizes half individual and full maternal heterosis. Whereas the three Breed the crossing. It is as the name indicates, it's with three parents, four means four parents. So the rotational crossbreeding system is a specific cyclic pattern of the rotating. Uh, the use of side breeds on in these crossbreed cattle from a preceding crosses. So two pro two breed rotational crossing, F1 crossbred females are mated back to the male saw. One of the parental breeds. In next generation, the crossbred female males are mated to sire of breed. And the same thing, which is earlier, like the specific crossbreeding, this is also different types of the crossing steps are there, whereas 57% in the rate is from the last sire breed, 29% inheritance from previous sire breed and 14% from the third breed. So here you can see that percent of heterosis in different type of the fractions of the heterosis. For example, types of the cross, male and female, two breed cross A into B, then individual it will be 100%, maternal it is dash, whereas the back cross it is individual is 50 percent whereas maternal is 100 percent. Same thing it is 50 and 10 10 and 4 cross breed everything will be 100 percent. Rotation cross 2 side breeds 67 or 2 thirds whereas the maternal is also same 3 sides 85.7 or 6 bar 7 same thing. Then scheme of grading above. So the base one pure breed native females will be taken and percent pure superiority will be totally it will be zero. Then the pure sire of first generation 50 percent, second 75, third 87.5, fourth 93.7, fifth 96 and uh, till 
the eighth generation it will reach to the pure breed of 99.6 percent then the consequences of our breeding increases the heterogeneity high deleterious recessive alleles outbred animals are less alike to two breeds breed complementary uh, cross bred animal and gene integration population will be there whereas the phenotypic consequences will be development of a new breed then improved performance production of the parent stock will be increased improvement in the reproduction and growth and efficiency will be there due to the consequences of breeding so suppose it's a total milk india is once again the data as per the 19th cattle census that is 187.75 million tons total milk production in uh, uh, india during 1819 is 8 point million tons so wool production 40.42 billion tons kgs then egg production 130.32 billion number of eggs so the same thing india has produced 187.75 million tons of the milk meat 8.11 million tons egg 103.32 billion wool 40.42 so these are all some basic uh, figures and uh, this is as per the 20th livestock census 2089 and contribution of livestock in uh, agriculture gdp is 28.4 and national gdp is 4.9% or 5% of course not able to, to satisfy the demand of the present growth of the population and we need to increase the population of the milk meat and wool at maximum level so exploit the genetic resources for the highest extent and using the breeding strategies so what are all the objectives we need to exploit the good milk meat and wool production highest extent availability of the good quality of raw animals that to be used then genetic improvement of the individual breeds so because of this thing we need to fix minimum production standards for all the things like the exotic inheritance and uh, the breeding soundness organized breeding policy then low genetic merit of scrub sites has to be called then avoid indiscriminate breeding and propagation of poor germplasm how we can do is the breeding strategy selective breeding strategy can be adopted grading up of the strategy then lot of factors are there which are ignored in development of a breeding program like animal species types of the traits availability accessibility affordability then production of the environment and location time frame for plant genetic improvement infrastructure of the livestock sector and resources allocated to the program and existing breeding program and other activities of the farmers so why we have to select different breeds is the cattle is breeding strategy is done for the milk production and crop purpose but main Uh, intention is for increasing meat meat production milk production because the drought is totally replaced by the mechanization in case of buffalo then the milk production only sheep increase in the body weight quantity and quality of the wool whereas the goat also same then the breeds of the cattle used for propagation of the indian breeds are gheer haryana malvi rathi kankrej nagpuri tarpar kar sahiwal whereas the buffalo murra and sutti only entire india it is used sheep marwari jaisalmeri magra pogal nali chokla malpura and sunadi goat sirohi marwari 
Jakrana, Barbari, and Jamnapari. So these are all the breeds which we call the propagation. So there is a salient feature of breeding policies. Individual breeds should be propagated through the selective breeding only individual breeds. Whereas the non-descriptive breeds should always be upgraded with high productive native indigenous breeds. Uh, whereas cattle crossbreeding and breeding up of improved indigenous cattle breeds and also HF and Jersey only are the two breeds choices as exotic breed for the crossbreeding. Sheep or rolling prolific sheep breeds crossbreeding with native breeds will be preferred and breeding will be allowed with crossbreeding females to crossbreeding means only. So these are all the breeding strategies are of course adapted in the country. Then different states to adopt different breeds and uh, uh, the cross breedings should uh, thereafter inter same mating should be made, made and general considerations for breed improvement like the well established indigenous breeds should never be crossed with any exotic breeds like a gear should never be crossed with that of a this jersey or hf whereas the nd breeds should be crossed with pure exotic breed like the a cross breed of manar gidda has to be always bred with that of a jersey or hf and descript indigenous breeds of same breeding track then installing pedigree and performing recording scheme like PPRS cases and best selection of the superior process dams of the bulls. Then efficient and early progeny testing are always encouraged. So a minimum standard of production of salmon is always encouraged, including performance standards of the dams for breeding sites. Always there is a policy matter. And easy provision of excellent quality exotic salmon, defined breed salmon for AI is always done by the different farms. And guidelines for use of frozen and liquid salmon in AI and natural mating, then scrubs which should be castrated and never be used for breeding by the farmers. And only progeny tested bulls which are free from all sorts of sexually transmitted diseases. Certified by Government of India or Government of Karnataka should be used for breeding purpose only. Then, breed societies should always be encouraged for conservation of the local cattle. Then, the sire selection should always be made on phenotyping, the diamond progeny tested, especially in case of cattle and buffalo, whereas sheep it is phenotypic character. Then minimum body weight of 25 kg, wood quality as per the breed and good phenotypic characters. Then minimum body weight of 30 kg should be adopted for 9 to 11 months age. So, ultimately advanced technologies in the programs of genetic improvement, advanced productive technologies like the embryo transport technologies, embryo manipulation techniques like sexing, cloning, etc. Uh, then faster manipulation and the production of superior gen platforms, molecular marker systems like all these systems. Then the marker assisted selection, then QTL mapping technologies, etc. So what is the future scope of developing breeding strategy is sketching out breeding strategy is the tool for success but manipulation and maintenance of the strategy is most necessary then interest should be grown within farmers and organized farm about the benefit of breeding plan to ensure the application and for improvement of drought purpose breeds cross breeding with any exotic drought cattle may be an area to think over later then advanced breeding strategies induce allele affecting disease resistant traits, milk component traits, etc. into the local breeds. So with this we are going to end the today's session and thanks a lot for 
patient caring have a nice day have a great festival all the best thanks